I'm back and better than ever. Okay. Hi, thanks for coming back to my channel or welcome if you are new here. Today, I am talking about the Philodendron El Chaco Red. It's a freaking beauty. Like that, like it's a freaking beauty. So let me just show you some of this. Look, this is a new leaf. This is a new leaf. This is the last leaf. This is the oldest leaf. So this leaf, you can tell it looks a little rough. Um, that's because it pushed out two new leaves. So it is okay. I need you to hear this. This is for like all your plants too. It is okay for your old leaves to die. There are many reasons this can happen. Um, obviously, if you have a bunch of leaves dying or a bunch of yellow or brown leaves, yeah, there's probably a root problem. But if you notice that every now and then your your old leaves are yellowing, don't worry. They're probably pushing out new growth. So when I first got this plant, you can look on my blog post about this plant and you will see, I have pictures of when I first got it, how I rooted it, all this endless information. Um, but I'm just gonna stick with showing you this one during the video. So when I first got this plant, it was only a chunk. So if you know what a chunk is, I can't pull it out because I've since rooted it, but it's, it was literally just this and I had to root it um, and it was one leaf. So it was this one leaf. It was freaking beautiful. I loved it. Um, thankfully it rooted. I had full success with that. And in the process, it pushed out this leaf. As this leaf was like this and kind of unfurling, it automatically started pushing out this leaf. So this, old leaf, right? It has done its due diligence. It has put in its time. It is okay for it to start wilting away. We're going to love it and we're going to cherish it. But at the end of the day, it's just sacrificing for its new babies, right? So these two get to be gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. While this one just says, hey, I gave y'all that. I gave y'all that. So all of that to say it's okay when your old leaves start to die. You're just sacrificing. Let's moving, moving forward to this plant. I'm going to go over some of the history as well as the plant care that I have followed, the routine that I have been under. It's obviously loved it, obviously been super happy. Um, and I'm going to follow kind of along with the blog post I did on the Philodendron El Chaco Red because it just makes the most sense. So let's go. All right, so there is a philodendron El Chaco. This is not it, this is the red. That is because of the red backsides. Oh, like just freaking look at that. Oh my goodness, just look at, oh. Ugh, say less, I love this plant, I love this plant. So it is, it originates from um, Ecuador or Colombia. Could not find an exact answer. That's about all the history I have on it. This plant is really hard to find information on, which is why I want to present the information that I have, but there still is a lot that I don't know. If you know it, feel free to send me an email um, or drop it in the comments so that everybody can be enlightened by it. Furthermore, with the plant itself. So like I said, this is an old leaf. This is what the leaf looks like when it starts to unfurl, right? So it's wrapped up and it's just this red and green combination. But then when it starts to unfurl, it's this gorgeous, like almost green golden color. Um, so beautiful, so beautiful. And that back is still that contrast of red. But then this is what it turns into when it starts to harden and hardens off. Oh my goodness. Just a moment of appreciation for this plant right now. Oh my goodness. So yeah, I'm obsessed and I love it. I highly recommend getting one. When we talk about plant care, I'm going to talk about rooting it first because that makes sense, right? If you have a chonk, you need to know how to root it before you need to worry about the plant care. So my chonk, I got it. I got it from a wonderful seller on a Facebook group. Um, he's amazing. 10 out of 10 recommend him. Um, I can send you that information if you want it, besides the point. When I got it, I put it in this cup in some spaghetti moss with just a little bit of perlite. Literally hardly any at all. And look at the roots it has given me. Do y'all see that? I hope y'all can see it. I feel like y'all can't. Yeah, y'all can. 
Oh, look, dude, it's so happy, man. It's so happy. So that's how I rooted mine. I literally, I would keep the moss damp um, for the most part. I never really let it dry out all the way. I also put it on a heat mat and it sat, it sat under the humidifier. And then once I started to see some of the roots, I moved it to beside the humidifier and off of the heat mat. So I hope that gives you some, some guidance on how you want to root yours. This one has loved it. It has done so good, which is why it's still in that same medium of sphagnum moss and a dash of perlite because it's happy. It is, they do like to be a little root bound. So I'll probably need to change it out of this pot relatively soon, but it should be okay for, for, for a little, little bit longer. Um, you can see it's not completely root bound, but they're definitely starting to touch, which means I definitely need to like probably pull it out. <laughs> I just don't want to bother her. I'm so worried about bothering, bothering her and her getting mad and like making me pay for it because I'm just not about it. <laughs> Furthermore, um, let's talk about the lighting. Mine sits in the Ikea greenhouse that I built with my husband. Um, it sits probably about two feet under the lights that we have in there. I'm not gonna lie, I know I said this is because it's an old leaf. I think it also might have gotten a little burned. Um, it's definitely old, it's definitely wearing out like it's an old leaf. So I do think that is a lot of it. But I do think I had it up higher, I had it closer to the light and it started to do this. It was also pushing out this. I don't know if that might have caused it to, but it worried me so I dropped it down and it has clearly not complained about being moved down. So think about the jungle. So this plant is an epiphyte. Epiph yeah, we're gonna go with that. It's an epiphyte, and that means it grows on other plants or stones and stuff, but it doesn't harm the host. Um, so, you know, some things will grow and it'll kill out what it's growing on. This one doesn't, it just looks beautiful and adds a whole lot of character to whatever plant it lands on. That being said, the way that it grows, since it grows on other things, right, it's under their stuff, right? Their branches, their leaves, their whatever. You get all the shadowed indirect light, but it's still super, super, super bright. I feel like I just talked in a whole circle, so sorry, I'm probably not editing all this out. That being said, the light that I give it, like I said, about two feet down from the light, this one sits, and it's, again, obviously very happy. So I would just, I would just very much stick with super bright indirect light. How I water it. So I have a moisture meter. Um, I love it. I will link the one that I have in the bio. Probably not because I don't know how to do that, but I will put it it's in the blog post. Um, and I stick this in here with the moss too. This is showing me it's very dry. So what I will do, I'll also fill it because, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to overwater it. And then I take my little spray bottle and I spray the edges. So this is going to be kind of hard to show but I spray the edges because I want to avoid directly spraying the chunk because personally, I have had that become a problem with root rot. Um, whereas if I just spray on the sides and let the water trickle down, it hasn't really, hasn't really been a problem. When I wanna fertilize um, my El Chaco Red, I put nutrients in the water and I use fertilizer or the nutrient water every other watering during the spring and summer. Um, I don't really fertilize it in the winter. I, so this is a new plant, yes. I did have an older one. I have since gotten rid of it. I bought it back when the prices were like, I bought a leaf that was probably like this big. That was rooted and everything. I think I paid $80 for it. Um, when I bought this chunk, this should be the disclaimer of this. When I bought this chunk with just this one leaf and the unrooted chunk, I paid $200 for it. This is a freaking expensive hobby. What? That is insane. So, um, I have had experience with them before, so I know a little bit more than just this one plant, but this is the plant I currently have, which is why I'm taking you through this one's life. Anyways, I've kind of touched on the humidity factor of it. You know, I keep it keep it pretty close to the humidifier. It actually sits, I'm looking, it, it sits um, right above to the left of the humidifier. And I would say that my greenhouse It'll get up to probably 80, 90% every now and then when I run the humidifier, but for the most part, it probably stays between 65 and maybe 75 because I, I don't always have my humidifier running. <laughs> I really think I've covered it. Um, 
The plant care for this plant is super easy to me. It's like any of your other philodendrons, honestly. If you're not used to potting in moss, you don't have to. You can totally do soil. You can totally do perlite. Um, with it being a chunk, I wouldn't root it in water, but I mean, that's how you do things. Go on with your bad self. I just really recommend getting one. Like they're pricey, don't get me wrong. You can wait until the price comes down, but like you just need one. Like I'm, you just, need, I have no affiliation with anybody that sells one. So I'm not just selling you for my gain. I'm selling you for your gain. This will add so much joy to your life, so much. If you want to find cheaper versions of them, you can look for babies. You can look for unrooted cuttings um, and stuff like that instead of a full plant. If you're comfortable with going through the process of rooting them and watching them grow, they're so cute from the like get when they, even when they're super little. And they grow, they grow fairly quickly. I would say that they put out a new leaf probably, they probably put out about two to three new leaves every month easily, for sure, for sure. So I think, I think that's it. Pest wise, I knock on wood, have not had any problems. Um, I don't know if they're really prone to anything. I have heard of people suffering with thrips and mealybugs um, and whiteflies, but just watch them. Pay attention to the leaves. If you see something, a little sketch, quarantine it, treat it, bring it back in a couple of weeks. So I hope this helped you. I hope, I hope I convinced you to buy one because I really do think it will change your life in all honesty. Just, I just sit there and be staring at it sometimes. And I'm just like, you really did that. You really did that. Girl, you really did that. You, you did that. That is just, I'm, I'm gonna let y'all go. If y'all wanna kinda read more into it, the link um, is barbiewithplants.com and there is a whole post on it and I go more in depth on the needs and I actually show you the rooting process pictures as well as when I first got this one leaf and when this leaf started unfurling, et cetera, et cetera. And I also have some stuff up on it on my Instagram, barbiewithplants. So be sure to follow along and if there are any other plants that you want me to go into detail on, drop them in the comments below. Yeah, I hope you have a wonderful day and I will talk to you soon. Peace out.